What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over crouching and uncrouching or standing back up in the first person shooter tutorial series. So I think this is the last episode before we start getting into the animations. I kept kind of debating when I want to do them, and I want to have it to where we can, you know, all of our, our sprinting and our crouching and aiming, I want all of them to have animations that we can see, both from the first person perspective and if someone else is looking at us. So I figured let's let's knock out some crouching and uncrouching. This episode should be pretty simple because it's a fairly simple concept when in Unreal. Basically the way it works is there's functions you can use to change the height of your collider as well as um, your half height, which basically determines where your start and, and end are of the collider that you are, which shrinks you down and puts you lower to the ground. You can also change anything you want. Like when I'm crouching, I've changed the walk speed to about half of what it is now. And then when I stand back up, I have that. So let's get into it. It's pretty simple. We gotta go to edit project settings and First things first, we're going to add our key to actually be able to crouch and uncrouch. So I have crouch right here. So just add a new action mapping, press this little plus, call it whatever you want, and then search for your key. I put C as the key, C for crouch, but you can put whatever you want. We are gonna be using game pads later on, so feel free to also set up your keys for game pads right now. Once you have this in here, you can close this, just keep note of this name, copy it even if you want. We're gonna need to use it in the code. So for me, it's just crouch, pretty simple. Now if we go into Visual Studio, we can go to our uh, FPS tutorial character, basically our base character. And here, we can go down and go to our setup input player component, setup player input component, excuse me and we can add our new actions. So we've done this a few times throughout the series, so you should be familiar with this by now. But basically, we bind our action with the name that we have. This is where you would paste what you copied earlier if needed. And you put the action name. We have one for press, one for released. Press is going to start the crouch. Released is going to stop the crouch. So we'll have to make these two functions. Go into your .h file, your header file. And scroll down to where we make our functions. I put them at the bottom of the list of custom made functions here. So right below switch weapon mesh if you've been following the series. If you haven't, that's okay. We are gonna use a few things that we've made throughout the uh, rest of the series. So you may wanna catch up, but crouching on its own is fairly simple and will not require anything from the tutorial series. If you do wanna catch up, I'll leave a link in the iCard in the top right corner right here to the very first episode and to the playlist. Okay, now go ahead and make two functions, like I said, one for starting the crouch and stopping the crouch, or crouch, stand up, whatever you'd like to call them, just so you know, one happens when you press it and one happens when you release it. You can also toggle it on and off. We can make a video on that setting later and all of our options like that. But for right now, while we're holding our crouch button down, that's when we'll be crouching and when we release the button, we will stand back up. Also, while you're in the header file, go ahead and make a boolean. I've called it is crouching. Basically, it just means if the character is currently crouching. It's pretty simple, but it is important because it can determine some of our logic. Like, for example, we may not want to be able to jump while we're crouching, but we may want to be able to sprint. We just have to cancel the fact that we are crouching. There's, you know, certain rules, certain states we should not be able to go to while we're crouching, and certain states we should be able to go to only when we're crouching. So this is important. Make sure this is U property for animation's sake. Since we're getting into that soon, you'll want to have this so we can use this in the AnimBP state machine. And you can go into your CPP file again, put in the new functions that you just added here. And then we can go and write those functions should be all the way at the bottom for me. They are. So we got start crouch and stop crouch. So for start crouch, the logic is pretty simple. We need to adjust our half height of our collider to work with our character. That way, whatever we're using, so if we're using, you know, a capsule that's twice as big and we, we want to shrink to half size basically when we crouch, we need to set our half height to half of the default size. 
Now the way you can tell what the size is, if you're using the template, it'll be 96, I believe. But uh, you can go into your first person CPP folder in Unreal Blueprints, first person character, and then go into the viewport. You can see your stuff here. If you click on the uh, capsule component, you can see the shape section here. You have capsule half height and capsule radius. So they're what they sound like. Uh, the capsule half height is basically how tall it is. And like I said, it'll it'll shrink both the top and the bottom. If I shrink this down, you see that? I can shrink it down to 55 as the minimum in this case. I believe I set it to 48, which is half. However, with the radius that it is, it can't be less than that. So if you want to shrink it to less than that, you'd actually have to shrink the radius. However, it's not a problem. Shrinking the half height as I did to 48 will make it the minimum size that it can be. So if you're happy with that, you don't have to make any adjustments to the radius. You can always click this little yellow arrow to revert things back to the default value before you touched it. So if you're nervous about changing it and you don't know if you can get it back or, or if you don't want to mess with the numbers in case you can't get it looking perfect, you can always hit the yellow arrow. Nothing to be concerned about. But you can see it's 96 here. So if I want to shrink, I mean, minimum, you know, 60 is looking pretty good. Because if I'm crouched down, that's probably probably looking a lot better than the standing, at least. We can be in cover a lot more and things like that. So that's one thing. That's how you can tell what the half, half height is. If you want to decrease the radius, you can also do it in code right here. But what I do is I just set it to be 48. Now I just get capsule component from the character and then set capsule half height. And that's the easiest way to do it. And quite frankly, it is safe because you can see in the constructor. So if it wasn't safe, this would have crashed in the constructor, which if it crashes in the constructor, you're not going to get to any of these other things. So you'll know that it wasn't your fault that it's crashing. It's Unreal's fault, Epic's fault. Anyway, now what we can also do is adjust a few other things that may be important to us while we're crouching. We can reduce the spread of the reticle. That way when we spray or blind fire, it is a little bit more accurate. You might want to increase the speed you aimed on sights, or you can maybe get on cover with it. There's a lot of things you can do. I mean, it's it's open to you and what your game is open to. But what I decided to do is change the max walk speed. So Unreal has this max walk speed variable by default, but it is a pretty good indicator. Essentially, what this is is just how fast your character moves in, when forces are applied to it. So max walk speed of 600 is basically it can have a momentum of about 600 units while it's in the walking state and that's how fast you walk so you don't have to do anything else you don't have to be sprinting you don't have to be running it's just your your regular movement speed it technically has a few other things that it takes into effect but i tend not to use the unreal's character system like they have their own states like swimming flying running all these things but i tend to make my own the crouch one in particular is actually very good because crouching can be very difficult trying to keep yourself on the ground while decreasing the size of your capsule collider. So I do enjoy using their crouch function. I've changed my max walk speed, and then I call a character crouch, and this is what I was just talking about. This will decrease the capsule collider and also make sure that you don't fall under the ground. It is a very useful function. Then I put is crouching to true, and this is mainly going to be used for animations, but it can also be used for if checks in like the sprinting and the jump, as I mentioned earlier. Then in stop crouch, you can actually copy all the logic, and you're just going to basically do the exact reverse of that. So instead of setting it to 48, I set the capsule half height back to the default height of the standing uh, character that we have, so 96. I set the max walk speed back to default, which is 600 by default. You can also change it in the blueprint. You go to your character movement component and go to just type in max walk and you can see max walk speed is 600. Now there is max walk speed crouched, which you can also feel free to use. I don't feel that it's necessary because you have to state, you have to change the character state that's naturally in Unreal to crouched and I don't want to do that actually and there are reasons, but we can get into that in another episode when we get farther along. So I set it back to the default, and then I call a character uncrouch, which will, again, resize our capsule correctly and make sure that we don't fall on the ground and all that good stuff. And we set is crouching back to false. And that's pretty pretty much it as far as these functions go. 
Uh, the only other important thing to note is I'm using git character movement here, the same way I was talking about the git capsule component up above. This would crash very early on for other reasons. So it's safe to use like this without checking if it's valid or anything. If it makes you feel better, you can check if it's valid. But you can see they use stuff all the time up here in the constructor that they just assume is valid. Because if these things aren't valid at this point, they're not going to be valid and that character is not going to work anyway. So this is perfectly safe to perform it like this. Now the only other thing we have to do is find where is crouching is. And we have to use is crouching to determine some of the things we can do. For example, I will scroll down to sprint. So sprint is a is a topic we already covered. Basically, when we sprint, we increase our max walk speed, and you know maybe we'll increase our screen shake and things like that. And we say we are sprinting. Well, if we are crouching. We should still be able to sprint, right? You're crouching and you press the sprint button. Well, you probably want to sprint. You probably want to get out of there quickly. So it's okay to cancel crouching and go to sprint, but it is important that we call stop crouch. Okay, we don't want to just go to this max walk speed, otherwise you'll be able to sprint and stay crouched. If we call stop crouch, it sets is crouching back to false. So this will only get called the one time. And more importantly, it increases all of our, uh, like our max height, our whatever other variables we changed and it reverts our max walk speed. And I do the same for stop sprinting. I just make sure that you're not crouching to call stop sprinting. It seems a little silly, but stop sprinting is actually getting called when we release the sprint button. See, released, we call stop sprinting. So say you're, you're crouching and you press the sprint button and it fails because you're crouching. Um, and then you call stop sprinting because you release the button. Well, this could still succeed. There's nothing in here saying you have to be sprinting to, to stop sprinting. So the solution is either add is sprinting as a, a requirement here, or just check what you need to not be doing. We don't want to be crouching if we're going to reset our max walk speed to 600. This is the issue here. If we release the button while we were crouching, then our max walk speed would be 600 while we were crouching still. So we'd be in regular walk speed while crouching down, which is incorrect. And you can feel free to change this for other things, like I said, jump or tilt or whatever you want. And that's about it for today, guys. Very simple episode, just showing you some, some crouching mechanics. You can see it's very, it's right away, because we don't do any sort of lerp or any sort of animation to actually make this go from top to the bottom. We just change the height and instantly go there. So it is very quick. This could be what you want. You might want to add a little bit of time, which we can, again, determine with the animation, the length of the crouching animation. So it's nothing to worry about right here. But in the next episode of this, I believe we are going to be getting into animations because at this point, I think we have everything we need to make a full state machine in the AnimBP and, you know, actually be able to have some animations for our weapons as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It does more than anything else for the channel, and I just really appreciate it. It lets me know that you're enjoying the content. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all the love you've been giving this channel and these series since I've been working on them, and it just really makes me happy, so thanks a lot. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description. We'll be happy to help you with any of the problems you had. And lastly, guys, if you want to see some of my programming streams, you can actually check them out here at this YouTube channel, Sean the Bro 27, or you can actually check them out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Sean the Bro 27, when we do them live. I would be doing live streams every Friday on YouTube here on this channel right here, Sean the Bro. Um, so you can tune into those. See what my thought process is. See how we can make a game in live time. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.